So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your power yes. that's made perfect in our weakness. I thank you you've not ordained them to fail because they heard that word that you did for me, you'll do it for them. Amen. And Lord, I thank you for rooting up, pulling down, overthrowing and destroying in accordance with your word in Matthew 15, 13, every plant that's not been planted by my Heavenly Father should be rooted up. So I root up addiction. I root up anger. I root up murder. I root up pornography. I root it up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and by the power of the Holy Spirit I release the delivering power of God Almighty into your body, into your soul and I command iniquity to come out. And I release the shalom, peace of God right now. Some of you are feeling heat come up your legs. God's doing a work. God's removing alcoholism at the root from you. Yes. And he's rewiring your brain. And I command your brain, your mind, to mm -hmm. default to the mind of Christ. Yes. Right now, to where your stinking thinking that Bill and I had is gone. Mm -hmm. And now you've got the genius thinking of the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ in you, the hope of glory. In Jesus' name. Joanna, would you share your story about fear, how you would run and hide? And now you're on broadcast to hundreds mm -hmm. of million yeah. homes, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, so you know, I have a Scandinavian background, so culturally there's this, you know, limitation and fear, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. But I had an extreme amount of fear, so when I gave no my- No wonder I love her, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And so when I got saved, um, when I gave my life to the Lord, I started going to, you know, prayer groups and Bible studies and things like that. And if I thought somebody was going to ask me to pray publicly, I would literally get up, run to the bathroom, and wait in the bathroom until they were all done praying and leaving. And then I would come out. And so as I was learning the Word, the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, said, Thou shalt not fear. And I'm like, well, I got a problem. And so not only was I afraid to talk, pray in front of people, but I was also afraid to even sing publicly or anything mm -hmm. like that. And so when I got baptized in the fire of God and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I said a prayer. And, um, and so I said, Lord, I said, because now, you know, this is a year into my journey. And I said, Lord, I asked for the gift of singing and writing music because I don't know how to sing really. And I know how to play the piano, but I don't know how to sing. I don't know how to write music. So that night I had my first spiritual dream encounter in heaven and I was dancing with all these Crazy. angels. I mean, they were dancing angels, artist angels. I mean, and the joy that, that I felt I've never experienced on earth. Thank you. God. And, yes. And I woke up with my first song. Oh, and so great. that was the beginning of, you know, hearing because my my motive for asking this the, for the gift of singing and writing music was not so I can sound great. It was so that when I sing, the Spirit of God moves through me Amen. to touch His people. That's what it's all about. But I still had this tremendous fear. Mm. And so as I started getting stronger in my faith, I knew I had to overcome this this challenge. And so one of the things that I did to break this challenge was... I lived in Southern California at the time, and they used to have this big, huge country western um, club, and they had these uh, contests there, and these big name musicians would come from Tennessee and all these places, oh and they would sing and they would compete. So like karaoke? <laughs> well, no, it was singing to a real band. Oh, it was okay. karaoke, but it was singing to a real band, but it okay. was a contest, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I had never sung on stage. And I was scared to death. And I thought I was gonna pass out and everything. And so I had picked a Shania Twain song and I'd never sung with a band, never been on stage. Oh my gosh. And, and then I was so nervous, I blanked out. So I had to make up the words to the song <laughs> that everybody knew. And I just felt like the biggest flop, failure, horrible singer, right? And so uh, after I was done singing, I was just distraught. But people came up to me and they were so supportive and kind. And they're like, oh, Joanna, great job getting up on stage. You did good, <laughs> keep keep on going. Yeah. And I'm like, 
Oh, okay. And so, but I had knew I had to be obedient to the Lord and I had to have this broken. So, you know, it was a process for me because there was multiple layers of the fear. So I got over my fear of singing. Then I had to get over my fear of standing, uh, talking in front of people. So I joined Toastmasters and I overcame my comfort zone. And so, you know, I encourage everybody if you know what your stronghold is, you have to fight and press through it. Yeah. Because I did not want to be judged by God for doing something I know I needed to do, and I didn't do it. And because of my disobedience, I caused other people to lose their salvation or not get their, not salvation. Get their salvation. Not right. hear the word. Yeah. Not hear the word that God gave for me. Because God has given every single person yeah. a message inside. Man. And only you, Bill, can deliver your message. Only you, Debbie, can deliver yours. And David, we're, we're each created to be a diamond. And diamond has facets. And, you know, diamonds are forged in the fires of the Man. earth mm -hmm. where it's tumultuous and hot and fire and it's hard and it's painful. But it's that life is represents that fire. So, you know, we've all been in the fires and we're forged in the fires. But that's what creates the diamond, the facets Amen. of the diamond. And we reflect God's image. So I knew I had, I knew that. And so I, I had to push through no matter what. Yeah. And that's how my, I, I broke through. And then the Lord began to teach me how to be a prayer warrior. And because I would, I'd never had encounters with devils. I didn't even think they were real, yeah. you know? <laughs> and well, I, I sure got my mind changed, <laughs> you know, when I got attacked by demons in the middle of the night, trying to choke me and suffocate me. And, you know, I would be so afraid. I would sleep with the light on every night. I would have worship music playing and I would literally read Psalm 91 because that's all I knew to do. But then the Lord began to train me as I began to break my fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear. He's given me a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Amen. So I began to declare the word of God. And I asked God, take, deliver me of this fear. I don't want this. I renounce it. I give it up. I ask for forgiveness for this fear. And I choose not to walk in this fear. So, yeah. And so because of that, then God would begin to highlight to me, I want you to go talk to the truck driver in the, middle of, in the street in his truck in the middle of the alley. Hmm. I'm like, what? Are you sure on that? Is this for you, God? Okay. <laughs> and so I did. So I was with a friend and um, and I was debating, do I go talk to this man? And I didn't know in the middle of an alley. And she's she's scared. She's like, we got to get out of here. I'm like, no, the Lord's telling me we got to talk to this man. So right when we're in that moment of decision, he says, hey, what are you two ladies doing here? And I'm like, we're here to go to this concert. It's a, And where they sing about Jesus. Do you know who he is? Ah, nah, nah. I said, okay. I said, well, what are you doing here? He says, well, I'm resting. I said, oh. And so we started just talking with him. And then I mentioned that I sing. He says, oh, you sing? He says, will you sing something sing for something me? for me? I said, oh, sure, God. I will sing something for you. So in my mind, I'm like, Lord, what do I sing? What do I sing? So the Lord gave me a song to sing, and it was Amazing Grace. Mm. And, and so I got him this way. I said, um, I said, well, before I sing, I always ask God if I can, I just thank God. Can I just pray really quick and thank God? He said, sure. So that was my opening to pray for him. Mm -hmm. There you go. So I included it in there and then I sang and the spirit of God hit him mm -hmm. and he started weeping. Praise the Lord. And we ended up leading him to Christ. Yes. Wow. But see, I would not have led him to Christ if I hadn't broken through my fear. Right. And to overcome that and get deliverance, right. like David was talking about. I'm down some Jordan, dark would you yeah. sing a song as we close out this segment? Something that, what, did you get a song when you were taken to heaven to dance with the angels? Yeah, I've gotten several songs, but I, I feel like I want to release a, a Hebrew blessing because everyone needs to feel a blessing from Amen. the Lord. They need Amen. to feel his presence. Amen. And so this is in Hebrew, and it means, Blessed is the Lord our God, King of the universe. Blessed is his holy name. Adonai loves you and he's healing your land. Amen. So Lord, I thank you yes. for your presence yes. as I sing and that your spirit goes out to every person who's listening to this broadcast and that you, Lord, will shine your light in the darkness of their soul and illuminate your love mm. that you have no matter what we've done, no matter how bad, or what we didn't do and we should have done, no matter what, it is the blood of Jesus that was Amen. shed for us. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I thank you for this blessing in Hebrew. 
And we bless the name of Yahweh. We bless the name of you, Lord God. And we thank you that you bless us with healing thank and you. your love. Thank you, Lord. Baruch Hashem Adonai Eloheinu Leulam Baruch Hashem Adonai Eloheinu Leulam Ani Ohev Oktach Ani Ohev Oktach I love you so says the Lord and I'm healing your land I'm healing your body Amen In Jesus name Amen. Amen Bill what would you say to somebody who is backslidden or it's time for them to rededicate their lives to Jesus so that they can move on where you'd received him at 11 but went off the rails. Bill had walked with him for 16 months. What would you say to somebody today? What would be that invitation to get on the railroad tracks with God again? I would just tell him, David, that, um, you know, I, I use this in prisons a lot. I say, how many of you a lot of you believe in Jesus, a lot of you believe in God, but you don't really know God. And maybe there's been times in your life that you were, were trying to walk with God, but you didn't have a real relationship. And here's the thing, it takes God to even know that you need mm -hmm. God. It takes God to even know you need God. Otherwise, you'd never think about Him. It's no. only by the grace of God, and, it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. I believe this, David. I've I, I'm actually been working on a book, and, I, and you know about it, The Fear of the Lord. Yeah. Because people have asked me for the last 40 years. I've been walking with the Lord. It'll be 42 years in April coming up. But over 41 years, I've been walking with the Lord. And people ask me all the time, you've never wanted to go back? Because I was doing everything. I yeah. was out there doing it all. You've never wanted to go back and do drugs again or cheat on your wife again or drink some more good whiskey or uh, shoot somebody or rob somebody. You've never wanted. I said, no, I've only wanted more of God. And they said, why? Why have you never wanted? I've never even had one desire to go back to that life. Uh -oh. Why? And I believe the Lord showed me this. It took me years to ask him and, and having him show me. But early on in my walk with the Lord, I heard a man teach on the seven spirits of God out of Isaiah 11. Well, one of those spirits is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that really picked my, you know, it piqued my interest and I began to study the fear of the Lord. And there's a direct connection because guys go, well, I don't want to sin anymore, but I don't, you know, I hear pastors going, well, we're just old sinners. We're born mm -hmm. sinner. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a sinner. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm a child of God. That's right. I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm not a sinner. Do I sin sometimes? Yeah. I'll get to disagree with Debbie and say something that's hurtful, mm -hmm. but I can't go over about a minute without asking her to forgive me. Because of the fear of the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the fear of the Lord, so if you don't want to sin, I'm going to give you a little little secret right here. There's a direct connection between the fear of the Lord and sin. And when you say fear of the Lord, you're talking about the reverence of God and also yes. the fear of God yes. because you don't want to hurt God and you want to stay in his presence. If we can if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of his son cleanses right. us from all sin. Right. If we have hidden sin, it's cuz we're not walking in the fear of the Lord. Right. But that reference I mean, that reverencing him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will never really understand because if you don't have a revelation of who he really is, yeah. you can't have a revelation of how much you need him. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The average person doesn't understand. David, I believe that I, I, I'm going to go out on a big limb here. It's really a thin limb I'm getting ready to go out on. Walk by faith. <laughs> but listen, brother, I believe a, I used to throw a number out. I don't know if I want to do that, but it's a large majority of the people who call themselves Christians, mm -hmm. the body of Christ that disobeys the first commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, and you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. There's something in their life more important than God. Yep. Mm -hmm. Something. Which, which anything, reason, anything that's more important is an idol. Yeah. Absolutely. 
And the reason there's something more important in their life is because they don't really know who he is. Right. Because when you really know who he is, yeah. you won't want anything else. Why you would you Why would you go after copper when you have gold? So here's yeah. the direct connection. <laughs> God's so, gold. Exodus 20. This is the direct connection between sin and the fear of the Lord. The people told Moses, don't let God speak to us lest right. we die. Mm -hmm. And you know what Moses said to them? Don't fear God that you might die. Fear God that you might not sin. Yeah. So there's a direct connection between the fear of the Lord and sin. Mm -hmm. And then one of my favorite chapters in the Bible is, because I love the Bible, and one of my favorite chapters is Psalms 119, because it's the longest chapter in the Bible. It's 176 verses. There's only three verses in all of those verses that doesn't talk about the Word. Some of it says the testimonies, the Word, the law, the ordinances. statutes, the ordinances, but it's all talking about the Word of God. But Psalms 119, 165. So P I ask people, do you, you want peace in your life? Mm -hmm. Here's a promise. Psalms 119, 165. Great peace shall you have if you love my word. Mm -hmm. But then it goes on to say, great peace shall you have if you love my word, and nothing will make you stumble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some versions say nothing will offend you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't get offended, you probably won't stumble. Right. Mm -hmm. What's stumbling? Sin. Falling away from God. Falling short stumble. of the Do you want a promise to never backslide? Psalms 119, 165. Great, great peace will you have if great you love my shalom word. Great peace. If you love my word and nothing will make you fall. Nothing will make you stumble. I mean, that's a promise, brother. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is the fear of the Lord. There's think, a direct connection between the fear of the Lord and, and sin. Let's pray for a release of the fear of the Lord and invite people into that secret place with the Lord, if you would, Bill, in closing. Mm -hmm. I want to say this before I do that. Um, just as I said earlier, it, it, it takes a revelation from God yeah. to understand who He is mm -hmm. before you'll even want the fear of the Lord. Before you leave. You know, Proverbs 22, 4 says, in the fear of the Lord... In, in humility and in the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Mm -hmm. And I prayed that verse over Debbie and I for years. Every day, every day I prayed that over us. Father, would you clothe us in humility? Would you clothe us in the fear of the Lord? Because you can't just say, I think I'll have the fear of the Lord. I think I'll start fearing God. It doesn't work that way. It's he's a gift. Got, it's an invitation. He has an, to draw you in. He's got to draw you. Really Joanna wants to add something. I, I want to add something yeah, really quick come on, in closing. Joanna. So... I knew God as a little girl, um, but then life happened, things got hard, and then I walked away, and then I was in the world. So I believed in God, exactly what you said. I believed in God, I believed in Jesus, but I didn't know Him. Yes, amen. So I was at a church service, a friend had invited me to, and it was a huge church service. And uh, there was a pastor there, and the, the message was written just for me. And so he gives this altar call, and he says, I want to invite those of you who know, don't know Jesus, come on, come on up. He says, but then I want to invite those of you who, who you believe in God, but you don't know him. And my heart started pounding. I oh, thought, oh, I'm not going in front of all these people. Oh, no way. Uh-uh. Well, all of a sudden, my legs got up and I followed. And I walked up to that <laughs> altar. And here's what I said. I said, Lord, I don't know you. I don't love you. But today... I ask that you put a love in my heart mm -hmm. and a passion for you that I've never known. Amen. And I will do it your way. Amen. Change me. Yes. That gave God permission. Yes. Amen. Is That's when right. I said, change me. Yes. And guess what? He did. That was the beginning of the most incredible journey of my life. Amen. And Joanna, then, that's what I tell guys all the time is ask God. Ask him to show you who he is. Right. In a dream. I don't care how. Because yeah. I can show videos in the prisons. I can... Get up, I can bring the most anointed speakers in. I can bring David mm -hmm. Harabini and Billy Graham. I can bring the most anointed men of God in to mm -hmm. speak to them. But unless God gives them a revelation, right. just like in Luke where Jesus was talking to his disciples and it said, then he opened their minds that they might understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who are we to get up and talk to people and think that God's got... Jesus Christ had to pray that, that then he opened their minds. Right. So we need to, we need to have their minds open that they will really understand who he is. So yes, let me pray that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Father, I thank you, God, for this time together with my friend David and his wife, Joanna, and my precious wife, Lord, Debbie. I thank you for this time together. And I thank you, God. 
And right now I pray for everyone within the sound of my voice, everyone in the, within the sound of my voice, God, that if they believe in you, but they don't know you, and they really have a desire to know you, God, that they would begin to ask you, Father, ask you to show, they would just say, God, show me how much you love me. God, show me who you really are. Give me a revelation of who you are, God, so I will understand my need for you. Because I don't really understand my need for somebody I don't know about. I don't understand. So, Lord, show them who you are, God. Reveal it, Lord. Even as you're doing with people in other countries, God, you're giving them dreams. They see a man in a white garment, Lord, and their eyes are open, just like Jesus prayed in Luke. Open their minds, open their eyes that they might understand. Father, open their minds that they might understand who you are and how really unbelievably awesome you are, God. People use that word awesome all the time. Really, there's no one awesome except you, Lord. Mm -hmm. We stand in awe of you, Lord. We stand in awe of you. And I ask you, Father, to release right now, in Jesus' name, to the people listening to me, release to them a revelation of your love. Release to them a revelation of who you are, God that they might begin to walk in the fear of the Lord, that they might be, begin to reverence you, Lord, and their lives would be changed forever, Lord, not just for a moment, not just for a year or two years, and then they go back to their old ways, Lord, that they'd never want to go back because they'd understand who you are, Father. Yes. Abba, would you do that for me, God? You said if I ask anything according to your will, you hear me, Lord. Mm -hmm. First John, Lord, I ask right now, according to your will, because you said you're not willing any would perish, but all would come to repentance. Lord, you, your word says that you long and wait for those that will come to you. Yes. You long and you're waiting for those that will surrender. And I ask you right now, give them a revelation, Lord, of who, that, of who you are. Everyone listening, God, give them a revelation. Open their eyes right now, Lord. Mm -hmm. Open their open their minds. Take the blinders off their eyes and off the take the blinders off their minds, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Father. I believe you're going to do it, Lord. I believe, I believe, because your word says you will. That's right. And I thank you, God, for your word. It never returns void. That's right. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Bill, Debbie, what a great time. Oh yes, man, thank so you. Awesome. Can you guys come back to Kansas City yeah. soon? We we can. We we'll have to come we love back. Love you guys. <laughs> yeah. We love you, you too. You know, you know, David is uh, my friend that's been out of prison. I met David in prison uh, fifteen years ago. Yeah, you were coming in for a ministry I session. I was coming in for a ministry, and a guy said, hey, tell my old Sally I said hi. And I said, who's that? And he said, David Herobedian. I said, well, how am I going to find him in, the, in Leavenworth Penitentiary? And he goes, well, he'll be in the chapel. I said, well, there'll be a lot of guys in the chapel. How am I going to find him? And he said, you'll know him, Bill. And I said, oh, okay. I walked in that chapel full of men, and the only guy I could see was this one guy, looked like a spotlight on him. And I walked over and I said, are you David? He said, yes. I said, well, Jerry Capra said, tell you hello. Mm -hmm. And David goes, oh, wow, tell Jerry I said hi. And I said, well, I have something to tell you too. I never seen the guy in my life. Mm -hmm. I said, I have to tell you this. The Bible says we're supposed to let our light shine, but it doesn't say we're supposed to blind people. <laughs> you need a pillowcase over your head. He looked like he had a 100-watt light bulb in his mouth. His face was glowing. You know why it was glowing? Because even in the Word, when it talks about the disciples, it said that they could tell they had been with Jesus. Yeah. When when uh, uh, Moses went up and got the Ten Commandments, he came down, he had to put a veil over his face because his face was shining because he had been with God. Well, the Lord showed me a few years ago, we can have that that glow all the time. We can have our face shining all the time if we stay with Jesus, Amen. if we stay close to Jesus, if we praise Jesus, if we love Jesus, we can have it all the time. And that's what my friend David Harabedian had done for all those 20 years he'd been in prison. Amen. And that was on a Tuesday. And guess what? He got out Thursday. And mm -hmm. we've been like this ever since. <laughs> and I love this man. I'm so glad to have him and his wife here today. And I just, uh, I'm so thankful. So love you guys. God bless you all. We'll see you again next time. Amen. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> 
Hi, I'm Dr. David Harabedian, founder of virtualchurchmedia.com. My wife and I, we have three primary areas of ministry that your ministry gifts and partnership help fuel and fund. We're asking you to help fuel us up today to send the gospel message around the earth. Number one, we reach people in Africa. We have Evangelist Israel Agre and a ministry center in Lagos, Nigeria. Recently, there were seven different villages in the rural areas of Nigeria, about 75 miles outside of the capital city of Lagos, that were greatly impacted. 60 witch doctors fled the area. They eventually came back into the Lord. The power of God fell. We funded beans and rice as they preached Jesus Christ, lit up the generators with the fuel. The light went up in the sky in an area where there's no electricity, no running water. There's the average income is $250 to $500 a year. That's our Africa Missions link on our website. And we also have a giving function there. So it was reported that of those seven villages over those 35 nights, 170,000 people were impacted and committed their lives to Christ. Israel Agre and his team of 30 years, his core team, there was 350 total workers and now 5,000 additional of the 170,000 want to go into full-time ministry. We're building a ministry center there on four acres of land. We'll be digging a water well. And so those are the things that we do through virtualchurchmedia.com in addition to our prison ministry where we have ministry resources on electronic tablets through the Adobo uh, application where prisoners have the virtual church on demand from the palm of their hand in their prison cells helping change lives one Bible at a time, one ministry resource at a time. And this is in hundreds and hundreds of prisons across the United States. The last I checked was over, um, I think, 1,100 the other day, but now they're gonna be on 800,000 tablets. And that's what your donor dollars go for, is to set the captives free in Africa that they've never heard the gospel, in the prison setting where they're hungering and thirsting and they know they've made a mistake. And we also have a TV broadcast to the Middle East on rabbit ears. So here's what's interesting. The gospel goes out on rabbit ears. People that can't afford cable are hearing the gospel. They're not able to fund backwards to meet the needs of the ministry. Prison ministry, not able to fund, making 12 cents an hour, but they're hungry for the word of God and there's a captive audience. Africa ministry, average incomes, 250 to $500 a year in the rural areas, uneducated, maybe 10% even can read and write. So we have the gospel going out in numerous ways. And the only way we can do this is with the friends and partners that God has linked hearts with, with either one-time gifts or monthly partnership. Will you rise up and send the gospel unto the nations and ask the Lord right now, just take one moment to pray and obey and whatever that number is that God put in your heart, for a one-time gift or a monthly partnership, I ask you to do it. I'm David Herbedian and I approved this message. Thank you in advance for obeying the Holy Spirit today.